Hola. Guten Morgen. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Do you like to travel? Or maybe you just like to travel vicariously through other people's adventures? Either way, I think we can all agree that travel has an important role in living a full life. It gives us something besides our computers and our coworkers to look at, at least for a couple weeks every year. It opens our souls, fulfills our sense of adventure, and helps us to see the world through other people's eyes. So whether you're a traveler or a couch potato, this show is for you. Welcome to Messy Suitcase. I'm Bob Greenwald. And I'm Lisa Ham Greenwald. We're here to share our travel stories and maybe yours. So pack a messy suitcase, buckle up your seatbelt, and enjoy the ride. Let's start with who we are and why we're here. Lisa and I have owned a house near Lake Rescue in Ludlow for over, 25, or for over 22 years. Sorry. We spent many summers here with our kids and many winter weekends skiing the slopes of Okemo while our family was living in Mamaroneck, New York. During the recession, we relocated to Colorado, where we skied Copper Mountain and Winter Park. No ice there, by the way. Thank God. And missed out on quite a few summers in Vermont. <laughs> but in 2013, Bob decided it was time to retire early. It's 2018, but oh. uh, don't you mean permanently stop working? Oops, sorry. He doesn't like the word retirement, but whatever. One kid was in college, one kid was finishing high school, we were done going to school plays and band concerts and lacrosse games. It was time to plan the rest of our lives. I had lived for four years in Germany during my time in the Army. And I was a foreign correspondent in Puerto Rico covering the Caribbean. We had taken our kids all over Europe, the Caribbean, Mexico, and Canada, so we knew we loved to travel. And I knew that I needed to keep Bob busy so he wouldn't drive me nuts around the house. There was no way we were retiring at home. So we got rid of a lot of accumulated stuff, not enough, put what was left in storage, and rented out our house in Colorado. Then we jammed our Toyota Tacoma with our youngest kid on a gap year before college, three cats, two suitcases, and a big uh, canvas bag apiece, Gavin's college stuff and various musical instruments, and we hit the road. First, we headed to Europe for five weeks, visited six countries. Iceland, England, Germany, Greece, Spain, and Italy. Italy. And then when we got back, we visited family, spent some time in Vermont, remembering how much we love it here. And here. Here's some images of our first travels. So here's our packed storage facility. In Denver, Colorado. And uh, this thing uh, is not the way I remember it. I remember when we closed that door, it was jam-packed, stuffed to the gills. I'm sure it was. And here is certainly a jam-packed, stuffed to the gills uh, Tacoma before we took off people's suitcases, musical instruments, everything was stuffed in that truck. Yeah, Gavin looks pretty sick of helping. <laughs> yeah. Helping pack. Well, we got it in. And then here we are going into the airplane for our trip to Europe. Yep. There's Gavin at the, one of the numerous waterfalls in Iceland, and we got there just at the beginning of October, and it was, it was so cold. Oh it was God, such it a was shock cold. coming from Denver to, uh, you know, to Iceland. It was, the wind was howling. Oh my gosh, it was so cold. That's in Hamburg. Yeah. And we went to visit uh, Lisa's brother, who lives there with his family, and uh, this is... Uh, oh, yeah. Now we're switching over to Greece very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Gaudi building in Barcelona. Yeah. And the Colosseum in Rome, part of our whirlwind European tour. And London, the view from the London Eye. So then it was time to launch the great retirement travel experience. We pointed the truck south to Mexico. And here we are, leaving Pennsylvania, where my mother lived, and uh, starting our five, six day journey down to uh, Mexico. Mexico. There it is, lovely Mexico. And here's the journey. The top's cut off, but all the way down, stopping in New Orleans, heading on down through San Antonio to Guadalajara. And Here's Gavin with the three cats who got uh, 
had to make the journey with us. And that was Gavin's job, keep the cats happy. One cat was not particularly happy with traveling. There's Ellie, who hated it. Noxy, who always would get nauseated. And the Buddha cat, who just didn't care. She just looked out the window. That's Kaylee. And Gavin shoved in the back seat with all these cats. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are approaching um, Mexico. Yeah, this, the approaching border. the border. Yeah. We had to pass through customs or the border yeah, crossing and, and immigration. Yep. Absolutely. And then welcome to Mexico. The plan was to live a few months at a time in different places, starting in Mexico, a huge country with an enormous variety of places to visit, from mountains to cities, from beaches to ruins. First, we drove to a small village called Tlaquepaque, try pronouncing that two, two or three times, a beautifully preserved historic village just outside of Guadalajara, Mexico, uh, which is Mexico's second largest city. It took us six days of driving to get there, with a stop in the middle in New Orleans. I had found a language immersion school there. We rented an apartment nearby for four months. We studied for four hours a day, then practiced our Spanish and explored the area. And the first thing, first thing we did in Tlaquepaque in Mexico was uh, go to a language immersion school. And uh, this is a class that, that, uh, that uh, one of the teachers, uh, very, very small classes, almost individual instruction for most of it. And we spent uh, two months, Lisa yep. and I spent two months and four hours a day in this language immersion class. Yep, that's our favorite teacher, Monica. Yes. Monica. Ella, nosotros, ustedes, mm -hmm. ellos, a mí. She was great. Yep. And every uh, Pueblo Mágico in Mexico has one of these very colorful signs uh, in it, and this is the one for Tlaque Paque. Pueblo mm -hmm. Mágico, and they also have, um, we actually watched them paint this mural on a building while we were there. Ah. And the umbrellas, a very colorful walkway. Uh, we were there during the winter, and it was our last day in Tlaque Paque, and he put these umbrellas up and gave us this, uh, this fantastic uh, uh, image. And one of my favorite things in Mexico is tequila drinking. <laughs> and here we are at the distillery and tasting, tasting some tequila. This was in Zapopan when we went to, an, uh, which is outside of Guadalajara, when we went to uh, an art and crafts festival. So that was lovely. That was Tlaquepaque and Guadalajara. We spent time in Leon, the leather capital of Mexico. We spent time in Guanajuato, another Pueblo Mágico. And then when COVID hit, this is where we were in Acapulco on vacation from Mexico City. Like the rest of the world, we rushed back to the States, a six day drive. On our way down to Guadalajara, we stopped in, uh, in uh, Leon, which is the leather capital of Mexico. And uh, they had just a, a leather district of probably, I don't know, a thousand stores all, sort, all selling uh, a variety of different leather goods. And this is a picture of uh, one of the, uh, the cowboy boot stores. This is a view of uh, Guanajuato from the mountain above. Very, very colorful and historic city. And some uh, Mayan dancers yep. outside of the uh, Museum of um, the Dead Guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whatever that was the, called. The Mummy Museum. The Mummy Museum. <laughs> That's an off the beaten track thing to do. The Mummy Museum in Guanajuato. And Bob at a, another thing we went to where we traveled with storytellers. Uh, through the streets of Guanajuato. Yeah. yeah. Here's a flight to Isla Mujeres, which you can see in the background. And, you know, we went to uh, the Butterfly Sanctuary, the Monarch Butterfly Sanctuary outside of, uh, outside of Mexico City. And, uh, yep. in, in March and in February, where the, uh, they were all migrating, you saw thousands and thousands of these Monarch Butterflies. This is a view of Mexico City from uh, Castillo Chapultepec in uh, one of the big parks. There's a castle. And some of the high rises going down the, that's uh, Avenue de la Reforma. Mm -hmm. and Xochimilco, colorful nice. wooden boats that you can go for rides on. 
And this is our last night in Mexico, uh, on vacation in Mexico in Acapulco. This is when um, COVID was coming in and we took this picture at sunset, very sad because we knew the next day we were going to begin our trip back to the United States because of the global pandemic. And this is uh, the uh, you know, monument to uh, the Niños Héroes uh, in uh, Chapultepec Park in Mexico City, very famous. Yep. And we spent a lot of the COVID lockdown here in Vermont, hiking the long trail, hiking around Lake Rescue, bird watching, riding our bikes on Scenic 131, and remembering why we love this place so much. And because of that, we decided to make it our home for half of the year. We still love traveling, but COVID just made it complicated. And, and we also discovered there's something to be said for settling into a place, making friends, and really becoming part of the community. So here we are back in Vermont, living our best life despite the pandemic, going for bike rides, enjoying the butterflies. That will, that will soon be migrating back down to Mexico exactly. City. Exactly. <laughs> this is near Thundering Falls, where we also saw these wildflowers. And you know, the, uh, one of our favorite overlooks here in the uh, Ludlow region. The Vista Trail in uh, Camp Plymouth State Park. Yeah. And of course, our own Lake Rescue where I like to do a lot of bird watching. So there's some of the friends that I saw, yeah. an eagle family and a loon. Last fall, we went back to Puerto Rico, where we used to live for a few months, and ended up buying a home on the southwest coast in Cabo Rojo. And here is our, uh, the house we just bought, a little uh, fortress. We call it the Casita Fortaleza. And it's in Cabo Rojo, in the southwest corner of Puerto Rico. That will be our home when we're not here in Vermont. And other things we love about Puerto Rico, this is Luquillo Beach, um, yoga in the morning. Yoga on the beach. Yoga on the beach. And this is a, uh, a flugelhorn player who just uh, came down to our local beach when we were staying in Luquillo, who played for, for multiple hours every morning. He was a quite the interesting character. He was. And the instrument was quite interesting, oh, too. Sorry. And of course, doing some uh, rum tasting at the uh, rum factory, Rum de Baralito. More, more <laughs> well known. And here's, uh, here we are in another rum factory. This one's uh, the uh, Casa Bacardi. And uh, we had a very interesting tour and experience there. And we visited a coffee plantation. Those are coffee beans. The red ones are ready to be picked. All done by hand. And this is flying into Culebra. Culebra, Viquez, and these little itty bitty planes, uh, 10 people on, on that plane. It skimmed the mountain and, on the way. And uh, you know, the, one, the one flight was, what, 15 minutes long? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is uh, actually our local beach from our new house, uh, right, down the, right down the road, about two or three minute walk. Ostiones. and uh, the West Coast Sunset, Puerto Rico. Which, are, which the West Coast is famous for, these, uh, these beautiful, beautiful sunsets. Picture perfect, as they say. Yep. So now we live here in Vermont in the summer, Puerto Rico in the winter, and travel in the spring and fall. I like to call us nomadic snowbirds. I like that. So we wanna share our travels and our philosophy and travel vicariously through the lives of other Vermonters who are going all over the place. So if you have a travel story to tell, reach out. We'd love to have you on the show. And check out our travel blog, MessySuitcase.com, or our vlog, our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash MessySuitcase. Please subscribe. So in the future, you won't just be seeing us. We'll be talking to guests about their travels. But today, we're going to interview each other. Starting with you, Bob. I'm going to interview you. I handed Danny a list of questions. Are you ready for I'm the ready. suitcase quiz? All right. Let's start with what is your favorite country so far? I think my favorite country so far has been Mexico, uh, principally because it's, uh, it's so close, and but it's also so big and so varied. You know, you think about Mexico as 
being the beaches, you know, Puerto and Nuevo Vallarta and the Riviera Maya. Cancun, but, everyone thinks Cancun, of Cancun and yeah. Cabo. And, uh, but Mexico is so much more than that. And we, we actually started our travels in the Central Highlands in Guadalajara in Mexico City. And we realized we barely scratched the surface of Mexico. Certainly didn't scratch the surface of Mexico City. Mexico City has got you know, so many museums right on par with the number of museums in, in London. And uh, yep. you know, it's, a, it's, it's a wide, it's a, a, the culture is varied in Mexico. Um, you know, there's a, there's a canyon, Copper Canyon in Mexico, which is larger than the Grand Canyon of the United States, which, which I want to visit. And uh, there's just so many places that I, I want to. Oaxaca. Oaxaca, Mio, Mio, uh, Mio, uh, Michoacan. Michoacan, thanks for helping me spit that out. It's really but, hard, uh, <laughs> some of these words. You know, there are, uh, there, there's so many places I, I still want to go, even after we've spent, I don't know, more than six months in, in Mexico. Yeah, I feel like we barely scratched yeah. the surface of Mexico City. and the. Of course, the alcohol, the drinks, oh, the, the yes. food. Yep. The yep. food, incredible food. Tequila, mezcal, Kahlua. The know, dance. That. The music. Can't wait to go back. Yeah, we did. my ringtone for Bob from Mexico is a mariachi band playing this song from Guadalajara. Da 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 <laughs> And it, it just reminds me of Mexico every single time. So at some point, we'll make sure you get to hear that in a show. Um, Got any travel hacks for us? Yeah, it's, I think our, one of our travel hacks is uh, don't just go into the touristy areas. And when we go someplace, we like to stay for an extended period of time so that it gives us time to go to the touristy places, but then expand out from that. Go to the places that the, that the natives go to. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to, to go in, into different restaurants and different areas and experience you know, things that, uh, that the people in the country uh, you know, experience. I uh, don't get to. Um, you know, I also and to do that, also you have to stay long enough. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and exactly. You know? it's, it's more. It's more than a week, because week, you know, it's uh, you get over your jet lag and sort of get your feet on the ground. But then, you know, you you, you start hearing about other places to go and things to do, and uh, that people don't normally hear right. about. Right, or you develop routines. You develop yeah. routines too, so you might discover your favorite coffee place or your favorite restaurant or yeah. little holes in the walls that the natives know about. But if you're just in there, in and out in a week. Right, exactly. Exactly. I mean, I had my favorite, favorite uh, orange juice vendor who sold <laughs> orange juice out of the uh, you know, side of a little, I don't know, little van. But uh, I went to him every morning. Yeah. I also packed my running shoes in my TRX, you know, so I can go run. Of course, if you run, you can explore more things. Uh, yeah. more, rap more rapidly, and my TRX is a, uh, is a, weight base, is a, a body weight-based uh, exercise system. Um, are other travel hacks? Wait. Actually, along the same lines. I, uh, I always pack my yoga mat. Yep. True. <laughs> because I need to do yoga, and if we're going to be gone somewhere a long time, I'll use this TRX, and I bring my running shoes as well. But I also stick a, a lightweight, not very thick yoga mat into my uh, suitcase, and you can use it for stretching for abdominals and for anything yep. at the same time. And for, uh, for phone service, we use Google Fi, which is available uh, and has worked in any country that we've been in. Uh, we also have a, uh, a Skype uh, dedicated number, you know, which allows us to call back to the states and or receive calls, you know, which don't count against our, our Google Fi costs. Uh, so that's, uh, you know, that's, that's really been really helpful to us. You know, the thing about Google Fi is that if you really love to travel, every time you go somewhere new, you have to figure out what kind of phone service or buy a little burner phone or do whatever it is you need or notify your phone company or you can worry about having all these extra charges. We went to Belize once pre-Google Fi and I discovered somehow a $200 bill for phone service while I was in the taxi from the airport to our apartment, it was a 20 minute taxi ride. It took me six months to get them to get most of that off my bill. Yeah, some... With Google Fi, we know what we're paying for. They're not gonna give us any hyped up fees just because we're in a different country. Yeah. It may cost more than the cheapest services, but it's gonna work everywhere. Yeah, in your case, it was some unexpected data download of a couple of gigs for whatever reason. Yeah. So they don't know what that was. Um, the, other, the other travel hack I, I, I always do is I purchased pairs of trousers that have zippered pockets. 
And uh, so I always carry my wallet you know, in my front, uh, my front pocket, which is zippered, and in my wallet, I've stripped it down to the bare necessities, one form of ID and one credit card. And uh, so if it does get stolen, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's much less stuff I have to replace. But it's always, uh, you know, always have to think about security, uh, and particularly when you go to travel in touristy places you know, that are known for uh, pickpockets. You, know, you always want to be cognizant and cautious of, of your surroundings, and that's one of the ways that sort, yeah. of, sort of helps me. Uh, you know, the, other the other travel hack that we have you know, is that uh, we have a debit card that, uh, yeah. uh, that we put in our wallets only when it's time to go get cash from an ATM. Uh, lots of expats use Charles Schwab or Fidelity. Uh, they do that because uh, those, those companies reimburse you for any ATM fee. So when we withdraw cash you know, from local ATMs, we don't pay the ATM fee. Uh, and, yep. in, and in our debit card account, we only keep you know, $1,000. So if that card does get stolen, um, you know, we're, we're at less risk for the amount of money that gets uh, stolen out of our account. And you always keep a little bit of cash in your wallet too, Keep right? a little bit of cash in your wallet. Like some places, especially in Latin America, yeah. are a little more cash-based. So you do have to make sure that you have cash, but don't carry too much because if it gets stolen, then it's all gone. We got pulled over once by a cop in Mexico because cops are really corrupt, unfortunately, in Mexico. Sorry, Mexico, I love you dearly, but... There, there, are, there are corrupt cops. He, we got pulled over for some trumped-up stupid thing and the only way he was going to keep us from having to go uh, to the police station. Yeah, to the police station was to give him every single penny that we had, every single coin. He emptied our wallets of every single dollar. Yeah. Yeah, every and, single peso. Yeah. And I mean, both of us made us made a show that there was no money left in him. Yeah. I mean, he made us give us him every single penny. Yeah. And um, we actually had a whole bunch more than that in the truck. It was just tucked in different places. So all we were able to give them was what we had in our wallets, which was still more than we usually have because we were traveling. Yeah. But uh, he could have gotten a lot more out of us than yeah, that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so good, so in the good end, reason not to keep all your cash in one place, actually. Yeah. In the end, it was $125, $150 total. But uh, you know, it, it, it taught us that, that some of the, the precautions that we take you know, are, are actually valuable and, uh, and are well learned. Yeah, I mean, some people even carry a fake wallet. Yeah, exactly. To, to give to pickpockets with like old credit cards that are expired or fake credit cards. So that's yep. an idea too yep. that you can do. <laughs> okay. Um, next question, Bob. When you travel, what do you bring home? I like to collect bottles of alcohol, bottles of liquor. No, from, uh, from, from that destination. You know, he doesn't really drink that much. <laughs> but it's like to collect the bottles. But it sounds like, like it doesn't. Bottles, you, know, and go to, <laughs> you go to Mexico, we like to collect the bottles of tequila. You know, I have you know, the, the mezcal. For, certainly when we went to Mexico, we have visited and taken tours of at least four tequila dis distilleries. Um, you know, Kahlua is, uh, you know, is from Mexico. And uh, you know, we go to Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is certainly the rum capital of the world, and uh, there are multiple de key, uh, rum distilleries there. So I like the bottles. You know, Cruzan, that's certainly from uh, Saint Croix. But you got Bacardi, you got Captain Pitoro, Morgan. Um, we went to the Captain Morgan plant in Saint Croix. Went to the Captain Morgan plant. So you know, like we like to tour distilleries. I like to collect the bottles, and then eventually I get around to uh, the drinking them. Well, for me, I like to collect jewelry. Yeah. So like this necklace has a, a tortuga, it's a, a sea turtle, and these earrings as well, I got them from um, Puerto Vallarta, and these from Bucerías, Mexico. And so I definitely, clothes too, clothes and jewelry are the things for me. That's what I like to bring home. Oh, and masks. Masks, yes. <laughs> now, now we have a place to put them. So, yeah. So we have a, ma a mask collection on our wall at the house that we've collected uh, from our various travels. Uh, we haven't been it's in storage. We haven't been collecting those because we didn't really have a place to put them, but now that we've, we've got a, a new place in Puerto Rico and we have wall space for them, we will definitely restart our mass collection. Well, we did restart it. We have one over our fireplace now we here did. in Vermont. We so did. we're sort of blending, uh, blending our worlds. Okay, Bob, now what are the things you can't travel without? Can't travel without my cameras. And I travel with two cameras. One is my GoPro, handy, quick, and it's, uh, lots of times it's discreet. In some places they don't allow you to take video, 
but uh, sometimes I can just uh, discreetly hold my GoPro and uh, take video anyhow. And then I've got my, uh, my Sony uh, Handycam, and my Sony Handycam I use uh, has a good zoom on it, which the GoPro doesn't, uh, and also it's uh, better in low light and has, has the viewfinder. So uh, I carry both of those and use them in, in different situations. Well, the GoPro can go underwater, can't it? Yes, absolutely. And uh, I've <laughs> taken, taken it underwater plenty of, plenty of times. Plenty of yeah, times. so we have a whole snorkeling series on our Messy Suitcase YouTube channel. Yeah. You'll have to check it out and see how it looks underwater. And the other thing I always take are my Merrells. Um, oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, wearing not them uh, now. I'm, I'm not a, a female, and uh, you know, I can get by with uh, one pair of shoes. And uh, my, Mer my Merrells are my go-to pair of shoes, in, along with my <laughs> running shoes. And uh, I can get by for a long period of time with, with just that. Anything else? Nope, I think that's it right now. All right. Last question. Have you ever been stranded in an airport? I have been stranded in an airport. I was coming back on... Not with uh, me. Not with you. I was coming back on a trip from Washington, D.C. to Denver on the 3rd of July. And uh, my flight uh, transferred in Fe into Phoenix. And Phoenix had uh, one of its uh, summer famous haboobs. Big old dust storm that delayed traffic into and out of Phoenix. Haboob, huh? Haboob. I never heard that and, before. And... Uh, I got, I got stuck there. It was late, at, late in the, actually early in the morning, probably 1, 1.30 in the morning. And uh, I, my, they rescheduled me for a flight at 7.30. That was not enough time for me to try to go find a hotel, go there, wake up at, you know, I don't know, 3.30, 4.30 yeah. to be back at the airport. So I decided to stay in the airport. And fortunately, enough other people got stranded that the, um, that the USO kept their lounge open and I spent the night on a on a uh, big comfy chair in the USA wow, lounge. Wow, lucky you. Yep. Not bad. Thank you, thank you very much. Yep, yep. So what about you, Lisa? Why don't you tell us about your worst travel experience? My worst tr travel experience. So that was going to a bullfight in Guadalajara. I always, we like to experience everything, so I wanted to experience a bullfight, but when we got to the bullfight, I found it so grotesque and disgusting, I couldn't stand it. Um, there were all these rich people outside of, of the arena with their wine and their wine, everything very elegant and then you got into the bullfight and people were like screaming for blood and the way everyone bullied the bull made me crazy. I hated it. And that, I, was that a pun? Bullied the bull? Yeah, it was a pun. I got that from my son Gavin when I was telling him the story. Um, yeah, it was just, I thought it was horrible and, and ugh. Just really bad for those poor bulls and how could people treat it that way. It was horrible. I will never go to another bullfight ever, but... Um, it was an interesting experience. I did it once and then we left. We left. After yeah. one bull. There's like seven bulls, but we, we were there for one bull and I was like, all right, I've had the experience. Get me out of here. Yeah. I feel dirty. Yeah. <laughs> so we left. Uh, tell us about your most interesting food experience. My most interesting food experience. God, there's so many because I'm a foodie. But um, I guess I would have to say when we were in Tlaquepaque, which is a Pueblo Magico, it's got this beautiful old center plaza. There was a little puesto, a little food trucky thing that sold elotes, which are like corn on the cob, that they cut off the cob and then they roast it. So some of them are blackened and they season it. They put it into a little bowl and on top of it, they put some kind of cream, they call it crema, sort of a mix of cream and sour cream, and on top of that, some Mexican cheese. And then they had a whole bunch of choices of, of hot salsas to put on it. And, oh my God, I ate them every day. They were so delicious. Though if Gavin were here, he would say his favorite food experience in Tlaquepaque was <laughs> Gus's tacos and molitos or whatever it is that they made. <laughs> What about, what about some travel hacks? Travel you got hacks? any? Well, um, this is my biggest travel hack right here to always carry this with me, which is a, a solar charger. And it's awesome because it's also a flashlight, super powerful. It saved my life in a cave once. And it, uh, it keeps me from ever running out of juice and Bob can use it as well. But I think wheeled luggage is a huge travel hack. I don't care about these backpackers. Uh, my back gets tired. I love traveling, so definitely wheeled luggage, even a wheeled backpack. And, and what we found, I think, with wheeled luggage is that you need to get luggage with very sturdy, yeah. substantial wheels. Yeah, especially. We, we've, we've gone through yeah. so many wheels, you know, that we've, we've gone and bought uh, 
multiple four packs of replacement wheels to replace the wheels on, on the luggage. That's and, true. And That's we, true. We've learned that uh, there's, there's a difference in quality of wheels. And if you're going to be doing a lot of traveling, you want to get good really quality. Good yep. And the, but my biggest one is mesh packing bags to keep your clothing in. Put your clothing in mesh packing bags. You take them out and you put them in your drawer and you keep them in those bags. Everything is organized. When it's time to pack, you zip them up, put them back in your suitcase, and you're done. Yeah. I just jam it all in there, call through it. Who cares? Ah, I could never travel yeah. the way you travel. Yeah. And then um, I always carry uh, disposable, uh, I mean, um, reusable shopping bags, little tiny little ones with me everywhere I go for any anywhere I am that I need a bag. And um, my other big one is traveling with cats to have a kind of carrier that opens on the side so the cat can spread out. Yeah, very important for the cat to be comfortable when they're traveling, yes, when they're is. stuck in their cage for, for 10, 12 hours a day. Yep. So, you know, I think uh, we're out of time. We're running out of time for okay. the interviews and we may want to get on to our last and most fun thing. Okay, let's do it. Which is, the messy suitcase lightning round. And well, I'm I gonna start first. Wait. So the way this works is that Am I- Am I gonna get struck first? Yes, you're gonna be <laughs> struck by lightning first. <laughs> and the way it works is you have to answer in five seconds. Okay. Not a lot of thought, All right. just a quick answer. I'm ready. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Aisle or window? Depends. Long haul, short haul? Long haul. I Long haul. Um, this has to be fast. Okay, okay, so it's window. Short haul. Uh, uh, aisle. Okay. Mountains or beach? Uh, both. Okay. City or country? Both. But what I'm, a I'm, cheater. I'm, I'm pretty boring. Eh? But uh, I'm leaning more towards city these days in my old age, 42. <laughs> Why? Because you can walk to stuff? Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot more to see. Restaurant? And because I have a house almost on the beach. Oh, that's true. Restaurant or food truck? Food truck. Favorite airline? Of course, Southwest. <laughs> because you have 250,000 miles? Yeah. And you can pretty much travel for free? Yeah. Favorite place? Favorite place. I, I think it's, uh, I think I was just going to say the, the grand country of Mexico. <laughs> and least favorite place? My least favorite place? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't know. I don't have one. Do I have one? I don't know. Okay. I, th I thought you would say Naples, Italy. Oh, yeah. Naples, Italy. Absolutely. I forgot, <laughs> I forgot about that. Yes, I had a bad experience in Naples, Italy. But, we'll uh, have to go back there. Yeah. And what's the longest your luggage has been lost? Two and a half days in Paris. So That's not, it. Not, not a pleasant experience. No. No. Running around the same underwear, not pleasant for the Parisians. Eh, I don't think <laughs> the Parisians cared. <laughs> so to you, Lisa. Okay. Lightning round. Do you pack light or heavy? I'd like to pack light, but shoes. Shoes. So I it's, always, it's, always, it's always right at the 50 pound mark. Yeah. Her suitcase is always the first one to go on. Yep. But I'm not heavy. It's on one suitcase. Yeah. So. Favorite airport? Favorite airport? Denver. Denver. Okay. Least favorite airport? Well, you know, it was LaGuardia, but I heard it's a lot better. So we should probably get back to LaGuardia and check it out. Okay. Um, Planner or go with the flow on trips? I guess I'm more of a planner, but I'm not excessive about it. Well, I've seen people that, uh, that, that plan down to the, you know, the exact hour. You know, they plan, so I'm going to go to this restaurant, and I'm gonna, then, then yeah. I'm going to travel to this location and yeah. be at this beach for two hours, and then go someplace else. We're not planners. Yeah, we're pretty good with the flow. Yeah. 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 Uh, tour straps or secret spots? Secret spots. Absolutely. But... Uh, I love the occasional hop on, hop off bus or Paris e-bike ride, so I'll do some tourist traps. Yeah, oh, we, do, we always do the tourist traps. You yeah. gotta do the tourist traps first. Yeah, do everything. But uh, just, uh, just for that experience. But Actually, my big travel hack, I should have said, is start every trip to a new city on the hop on, hop off bus. Every time. We no always matter do how that. touristy it is, do it, because gives, it gives you a great overview. And then you decide where you're gonna go back to yep. later on. Absolutely, we've done that pretty much any city we've been to. Yep. Uh, frugal or splurge? I'm normally frugal with the occasional splurge. Yep, absolutely. Okay, and then? Hmm. Oh, everywhere we go, we take a selfie of the day. Are you ready? I'm ready. Come on over, because here we are. I'm always on this side. Oh, try not to uh, unplug your mic. All right. <laughs> I'm on this side. All right, smile.
All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, and thanks for tuning in to the Messy Suitcase Travel Show. Yeah, we got stories, got travel stories to share. Send a message to Okemo Valley TV. Next time, we're gonna bring in a couple of our friends, special guests, Linda and George Thompson, who are Lake Pauline residents, and who are just completed a stretch of COVID postponed travel that had them frantically crisscrossing the globe. So until then, ciao, au revoir. Adios and auf Wiedersehen. And may, may your, your suitcase, suitcase always be messy. Be messy.